What's up everybody? Welcome back to the shop. It's getting super exciting in the shop today. We're getting ready to build the new Arma Limitless V2. I'm not going to go over all the new parts in the car and the specs. I did that in my last video. The unboxing video, if you missed it, the link is down in the description. We got a bunch of goodies to throw in this car. Of course, we got Castle Creations XLX2 to push the most amps. We got a Castle 2028 1100 kV motor. Big old fist scale motor, super heavy, lots of power. So if there's one aftermarket part that I want to add to this car, it's going to be a EMP motor mount from EM Performance. These motor mounts are great. Uh, they're just so beefy and so strong. It's really going to make sure that this fifth scale motor doesn't move around and get destroyed. Other things going into the car is, of course, Fly Sky Noble Receiver. Uh, I figured out we can make this dual antenna receiver. So we got some extra antennas here. We can make it dual antenna. Of course we got Eco Power Servo, the 120T. I run the same one in my GT Limitless, so I figured stick to the same servo since my driving style is already used to it. I know I've been talking about the new Onyx packs coming in from James McCoy. Uh, they're not here yet, so we're just going to go ahead and get these China Hobby Line batteries ready. We got some QS8 connectors. We'll just throw those in the car while we're still waiting for the new Onyx batteries. Then of course we got to do a nice paint job. We got some nice fluorescent green Traxxas because it's a little bit cheaper. We got some white to back it up to really make the color pop. I'm going with the green and the white because it's green eggs. And this car is going to go straight ham, dog. We got the green eggs in the ham. But first, before we actually start putting all the fun stuff into the car, we have to go through the whole car. We got to service the diffs. Make sure all the screws are tight and loctited. Check and make sure they're shimmed properly. Maybe add some thicker diff fluid to help the car track straight while you're speed running. So let's go ahead and get on this build. the new GP5 diffs. So we're gonna open these bad boys up, put the thickest silicone diff oil I have, one million weight, try and lock them up as much as I can, which is good for speed running. If you know, I run Score Star C diff lockers in my GT car, and I'm trying to go as cheap as possible on this build, and we're just gonna lock them up ourselves. If you wanna go even thicker, you could just epoxy the diffs together, and that'll literally lock it up. 
I've never done it, but if I want them to be tighter, we'll go ahead and lock them up in a different video. Oh! I have the diffs completely cleaned out. So these new bulkheads, I can't even fit one shim inside. They're so tight that it barely fits in there. So we're gonna run no shims, but over time the bulkheads might, you know, start loosening up and everything. And you always want to periodically check your diffs, maintain them, and make sure that they're properly shimmed. So the front has constant variable drive shafts, so they don't move. The rear does not. As you can see, the rear drive shafts have all this play. It looks worse than the version one even. So, we'll pull, go ahead and pull out the diff and we'll get rid of all that play. You don't want any play in your drive shafts or else they start heating up a lot, especially at high speeds and then you start doing damage to your drive cuffs, to your shafts. Oh, rings. bigger tubing, some heat shrink tube. That thing, just a little bit of uh, waterproofing marine grease to put around the gear. And we're good to go. So now we're gonna start working on the center drive line and the motor mount. And once we service that, then we could really start building it and actually start putting in the electronics and everything. So it comes with a stock 39 spur gear. We're gonna go ahead and switch it out with a Sega Customs 28T spur gear. It's the smallest eight millimeter bore I have. I'm going with the smallest one because then with the pinion we could just start small and then work our way up until we get to what we need. And then while we're in the center drive line, just like the rear drive shafts, we have to add some O-rings and drive cups so then these have no movement so they don't overheat. And of course we're putting in our new EMP motor mount from EM Performance. This stuff is the best guys. It's made from 7075 aluminum, the best 7075 aluminum, uh, T6 aircraft aluminum. I have never broke any EMP part. Twist by hand, break the Loctite, then screw. With this new Pinocho spool, these front and rear drive shafts are literally the exact same length. We got the stock one here. Just under 100 gram. EMP, let's see what we got. 104 grams. That's only 10 grams more. That's barely anything. And look how hefty that is. I mean, the stock one, wimpy, wimpy. EMP, hefty, hefty. Totally worth 10 extra grams. One last comparison to the stock one. As you can see, here's the stock one. They're both lined up exactly where the bearings sit. The stock one, you only could slide out this far. EMP, you could slide out this far. You could fit like 50, 48 or something crazy. Basically, you could fit enough gears to have 100 teeth on this motor mount. I guarantee you probably can't even fit 75 on the stock one. So you'll never run out of gear options on this one.
They also improved the bearings in this new version too. You know this car is going to go straight ham, so we definitely need the mustard sauce. Loctite, thread locker, 271. You need that mustard sauce on the gears. we can finally start setting in the electronics. So, a XLX2 fits perfectly without trimming. Checking out these CHNL batteries, um, they fit, but these wires need somewhere to go. I think if we just trim off these front tabs on the battery trays, they will fit perfectly. Oh, that's one way to do it. Bam, fits perfectly. to the receiver um, then I'll do all the wire management off camera but real quick I want to show you guys how to do a dual antenna on this receiver uh, it's just the FGR4 version 2 for the Fly Sky Noble MB4 it's like the most basic receiver that you could find for this remote Would you give me a sign or maybe write me a letter I just 
This car fully loaded weighs 18 and a half pounds. Four batteries, all the parallel connectors and everything. All right guys, the build's all complete and we've been testing it out. We've been taking it out to a parking lot a couple nights, uh, warming up these batteries, taking it slow on those before we really give it some juice. We just went out with Eric Woosley when he was doing the 4S challenge. He hit the 130s, it was crazy. Um, I was doing testing with this car. I wanted to hit 110 like it says on the box for the first run. I ended up hitting 109 mile per hour. Uh, I lost brakes. Woo, slow down. Dang. Do you see that? Did I hit anything? I don't think so. You're doing a figure eight through everything. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. Custom gears, you can't hit the flat spot on the center spool. So we're gonna have to figure out something to fix that. I'm either going to drill divots into the shaft so then I could use pointed grub screws to grab that and it won't come undone anymore. Or I will grind a flat spot on the shaft and be able to use flat grub screws so it won't come undone. But otherwise we lost brakes twice that day and luckily we haven't crashed this car yet but we got very, very close. I weaved in between construction barriers. I missed a bunch of metal by like that much. Yeah, I don't think we hit anything. Stop. Read. 109! We almost hit the 110 on the box. So the car is still in one piece. In the next video, we're gonna fix the center shaft so the grub screws will stay. And then also I want to put JB Weld into the front and rear diffs because I'm used to lock diffs in my GT car. I've never had a problem running Scorched RC diff lockers. I love it with foams. You know, all four tires hook up the same. Uh, I kept losing control, giving this a lot of power. It wanted to go left or right under a lot of power. is really sketchy. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I cannot wait to push this car to its full potential. I'm so happy that it's still in one piece right now. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Make sure you hit that like button. If you're a new watcher, you gotta make sure you hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to click that bell because you do not want to miss any more videos of this car on this channel. Thanks for watching.